last week we were having our Bible study and our focus was on mothers and motherhood and the relationship between men and women. And I alluded to the fact, according to scripture, that the man is the head of the woman. I refer to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16, the fall of man. When God says to the woman, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. This is what God is saying. God said that, women, and he shall rule over you. I also mentioned a passage from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Wherein we read, Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. However, 
even though it's a very strange and peculiar situation, Joseph is obedient to the message brought by the angel. In our own context, that would have been humiliating. Think about it, men. You are engaged to someone that person becomes pregnant, unknowing to you. Well, some men will go crazy just for that. But Joseph didn't go crazy. Joseph didn't become violent, he wasn't abusive. <coughs> Joseph was obedient. This is a time when we think about humiliation. The relationship between obedience and the fact that often when we are obedient to God, we are humiliated. We see that in the passion of Jesus. He is made a public spectacle. According to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 67. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him. This is Jesus, the Son of God. They spat in his face. They gave him a crown of thorns. They stripped him naked. Because of obedience. Obedience is articulated in Philippians chapter 2. When Paul says, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient point of death, even death on a cross. Obedient, notwithstanding the humiliation which led up to his death. With regard to his followers, Jesus said, according to Luke chapter 21 and verse 12, But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons. And you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. Jesus is saying to us that when we are obedient to him, we too will face humiliation. When you stand up for Jesus and what he has found in his life and teaching, oftentimes you will face the fire of deep. Think about the political sphere. When you take your religion, your beliefs into your politics, Sometimes you end up in problems and your political bodies ostracize you because of the stand you take. But the point is you first and foremost have an obligation to God, not the political agenda. And so it may occur that certain things are being discussed, certain things are being proposed. I have a very good friend who tells me about much of the history of the politics of the Turks in Caicos Island. And he said to me over and over again that even though I was there when this started, and I was there election after election, 
Now I'm on the sidelines. Because I've said, this is not right. This is not the way. He's been sidelined. But, as he alluded to me, <coughs> even though he's been sidelined, he has sat and he's seen the consequences of people not making good decisions. Those who run for public office, and that's a good thing. It's nothing wrong with being involved in politics. Politics sometimes is a nasty game, but people must cover. But if you ever you're involved in politics in a leadership position, you have to bring your obedience to God to bear. Sometimes even if you have to stand alone, 